Hey folks, Jonathan here. Uh, more talking. We're not getting much work done here, but we're getting some parts collected. And that's what I wanted to talk about and show you. Uh, let me see. 64 Chevrolet pickup truck. The plans was to take these trailing arms out. Now, I don't know how many of you have messed with these before or know the deal on these. Uh, these trailing arms actually work really well and they're long coal spring suspension and they basically work as a ladder bar not much difference but uh one thing is is uh nascar actually uses this same setup and i don't know whether anybody used it before general motors did on their trucks or not but but it, it basically nothing but a ladder bar uh, you're going to have a pan hard bar to keep it from going left to right and then you've got you know two coals and a set of shocks I mean there's not much to it and the plans was to use these and I was going to cut them out from under this truck because we was trying to stick with mostly OEM parts uh, but uh, a friend of mine I was talking to said don't do that I've got some already out and so I went to his place today and grabbed a set that was already out and they built just exactly like these you know it's an i-beam basically is what it is and i'm going to show them to you okay here's the set that he had that i got from him now built the same you know basically an i-beam construction you know two separate ones put together to build it and the difference is, is these have got a little bit different a little higher angle on them and bolt bolt in the same way they're actually uh, straight if you look down them. Um, you get them spread about the same distance. But, you know, they're just straight bars. So no different than a ladder bar. But, you know, like I said, the plans was to use stock stuff. This is as close to stock as you're going to get for a 64 GM truck. Although, these were definitely not stock. And these are actually NASCAR, and really no difference between these and the truck. A uh, little different angle back there, but uh, what I'm getting at is, is this is what I'm going to use, but we wouldn't have to use it. You know, we could actually use the uh, the ones out of the truck, and you know, basically going to be the same thing. Uh, the good part about these is they're already out, and uh, this is what we're using. So these cost me a total of twenty dollars, ten dollars a piece. Uh, that's one of the good things about living here in North Carolina. You know, we're around a lot of race shops, and you know, I've actually used uh, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated parts and before on pulling tractors, valves, stuff like that, Dell West titanium valves. But uh, but this should make a really good set, and we'll just leave the childers on it. Uh, you know, all they did looks like they just laser cut one side of it out. But there's really no difference, and I don't even think the length is different. Uh, if it is, it's not much between these and the truck but like I said the only noticeable difference is the angle up here and we may end up changing that anyway because I mean we can cut them and redo them whatever we need to do but that's what we're going to use they've already got uh, they're already set up with the pivot so we're good to go there uh, no problems with them and let me see what else have we got I'll show you some more okay next we've got a set of 30 by 12.5 flicks uh, in pretty good shape uh, Goodyear Eagles and they are drag slicks. They're not circle car, you know tires or nothing like that and Actually dragway special is what it says on but that's what we're gonna run on it uh, Probably gonna change out some rims and run some different rims because of the lug pattern and stuff, but But that's what we plan on putting on and they've got plenty of life left in them and We'll see how that works out. So That actually puts us in a What's considered the big tire class where uh, you know it changes at ten and a half inches so we're gonna try to get them tucked up under it and I, well, I'm sure we can do it we're gonna do more and try we're gonna actually do it but uh, another thing just some stuff I've had um, 6 AO MSD box that will work good with the, the HI it actually just uses the pickup in it and we can wire this up now I've got a 6,000 uh, chip in it I think the six uh, one of them, see the 6A or 6, one of them's got, uh, 
It's the same thing MSD except it don't have the the rev limiter and this one does and like I said I think it's 6,000 now so we'll see what we got to do with that. Okay some of you may remember the 1962 Grand Prix that I picked up and it had a brand new gas tank on it and it had this Holly fuel pump mounted on the frame. I uh, don't know if it's good or not. It looks new. It's got mud daubers. It's capped off on this side but it got mud daubers on this side. Uh, whatever you want to call them. We call them mud daubers here. But So I'm going to have to take this plate off and see if I can get everything cleaned out. And I'll probably have to run a uh, fuel pressure regulator on it. But, so I don't have any money in that. I don't have any money in this. This came from a Camaro that I had junked a long time ago. I think I, matter of fact, uh, one of the garages gave me the car and there was something wrong with the engine. That was on it. And like I said, I gave $20 for what we're calling the uh, ladder bars and wheels and tires were free and when I say free you know I got friends that when they need parts or something like that I help them out so when I need something they help me out so you know I might have some trade material somehow some way down the line in it but it you know really don't matter uh, I didn't have to front any money for them so I've got them and the other thing is uh, our front spindles and rotors and calipers. Now this is 1985 Corvette and these spindles are actually aluminum and they uh, pretty nice setup. They don't have a they don't stick out you know with a spindle like most of them with the bearings. These has got the individual bearings that bolt in uh, you know the hub with the bearings pressed in it. So the reason I wanted to run these you know of course the Triumph don't have adequate brakes on it, uh, but the you know the spindles are little tiny spindles on that car, and of course if we're going to go. This will get us to five lug. This will get us plenty of brake for that light of a car, and even though they're you know single piston calipers, and you know being aluminum, it won't add a bunch of weight. And what I'm going to do is I will either take the upper and lower A-frames off and box them in, strengthen them up, redo the ends on them to where I can actually mount a ball joint that bolts in that will fit in this and these are probably going to be seven degree uh, holes. I haven't checked yet but you know we can re-ream them to a different degree. We can uh, you know do a lot of things with them to, to you know come up with a ball joint to fit them and I can go ahead and use the measurements that's on the A-frames that's there. That way I can get, you know, all the uh, geometry right on it. And if I don't box them in and, you know, do something on the ends of them, it may be more work to do that than it is just to make a set. And we can make them out of, you know, tubing and a uh, good strong set. And then uh, we'll be able to run these. Uh, these was free. Uh, buddy of mine had stripped an 85 Corvette a long time ago. He was going to use these on a rat rod that he was building or a street rod and he never used them so he's just had them laying there told me to get them get them out of the way. So, so far we're in for $20 for the for the ladder bars and that's it. And we're just about ready to go ahead and uh, get the car in here. I've started to take it apart to put some uh, or you know get the body off the frame get it in here. Uh, you know, I've still got people that kind of don't like the fact that I'm doing this, and, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, I could have left it set and let it rot away for another 30, 40 years, I guess. Uh, you know, and that's what was going to happen. So either way, we're going to do what I'm going to do, and that's just the way it is, I guess. So uh, anyway, like I said, we've got a lot coming up. I'm going to get wide open on this thing as soon as we can get this frame in here and uh, start getting some measurements. I wanted to go and get the tires lined up because I need to get some measurements to figure out how wide I need to go. You know, make sure the suspension is going to clear. Everything's going to be fine there. I've got to run two frame rails down the, the original frame, which when I get the body off, I'll show everyone how I'm going to do that. But uh, for now, that's it. And we've, uh, we need to, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I may not be able to do a whole lot, but I need to get the engine uh, to where I can run it for a little while with some water in it and you know that uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll have enough good weather later on this week I can do that but uh, anyway appreciate everybody watching and uh, till next time bye